Hey, what's up? Live. We are live in my warehouse. Ideal. Oh, such a hassle. Get, you know, the way that they have designed the interface for Facebook Live, or uh, uh, YouTube Live, is just terrible. Uh, they, like, to share your live streams to any other social platform is such an enormous pain. Uh, I think I'm going to invest in um, one of those Mevo live stream cameras that just like automatically does it for you because like if i want to go live, i can't share the if, okay if you're using your phone you can't share the facebook live um link until you've already started streaming right and so i have to have this stupid like dead air for the first three minutes of every live stream video so i can share the link to like the facebook group it's like it's the dumbest thing in the world god that's a Screenshot to be scared of. Ugh. That's... Cr Ugh. All right, so I'm sharing this to the Facebook group. It just takes forever. Uh, if you're here, thank you. If you hit the notifications, um, you, you're here. There's a little bell in the bottom right corner. And like when I'm typing, you can see the camera shaking because my wrist is on the um, power cord. It's just, it's just it's just a dumb a dumb setup. Okay, I shared it. Let's do this. This is um. I don't know, my girlfriend's texting me. God damn it. Did everyone is everyone still here? Hey, so uh, if you're here, give a thumbs up and um, say something in the chat. We're just going to go over a, uh, a my thrift store haul for the past week or so. Um, you know, not many clothes in this one. Uh, generally, if I buy clothes, I, I list them that day. Because, uh, man, it's getting pretty hot in here. Whew. Woo! It's getting pretty warm. <laughs> um... Yeah, if I buy clothes, I list them like that same day because I don't want a death pile of clothes because I hate listing clothes and I'm only trying to buy clothes that are worth like, you know, 40, 50 bucks, like Patagonia jackets and that kind of stuff or like really cool t-shirts that I like have personal investment in. So not a lot of clothes here, mostly hard goods, uh, stuff like that. Again, I'm not showing my books either because like who wants to see an hour long video of just book titles. So these are all hard goods, kind of unique, kind of fun things uh, that you can look out for at a thrift store and make some money. Also, a quick shout out to Eddie, Alana, Jennifer, movie reviewer, Tiffany, disc golf dude, uh, Immense Hustle, and Chewy Lemonheads. I would bet le movie reviewer uh, is a spam account because may God bless you has nothing to do <laughs> with thrift stores at all. Uh, so I think they might just be going into all the live streams and just saying, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, trying to gain uh, viewership for their own channel. <laughs> Could be wrong. Um, I just don't know what that comment has to do with anything. Anyways, to the thrift store haul. Let's go, moving on back. First item, selfie. It's a, a board game, uh, new, new, you know, sealed and everything. The ceiling's a bit loose, but that's okay. You can still sell this new on Amazon, and uh, I paid 99 cents for this, and the comps are 25 bucks. New in box games are always, always, always going to be a great bet. Um, you know, no matter how dumb they look like this, they're really good. Especially if they're discontinued. If you can get your hands on a discontinued box, a uh, new in box game, you might have some money. My Little Pony Puzzle Lunch Box. Uh, when I bought this, the comps were like 25 bucks. And now it's down to like $10 on Amazon. I haven't listed it for a week. So... Uh, that's not good. However, there's a lot of movement, a lot of volatility um, on the uh, on this ASIN. So I'm gonna do it at fixed price. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna have it um, uh, excluded from my uh, auto repricer, which is um, this is such garbage. From my auto repricer, and uh, it'll be at twenty five dollars, and I think it'll sell in a few months or a few weeks. I mean. I've sold this one before. Uh, it's a Sony WMSX F44. You can see right there. 
Uh, it's a little handheld, like, sports radio. You'd run with it, I guess, and listen to it in your headphones. Uh, I sold one of these for 70 bucks, I think. Um, this one works fine. You know, you can look inside, see there's no issues. And then the battery on these is underneath the, uh, it's right here. And so you want to open this up. Uh, it's kind of hard to open. You got to really get your fingers in there. There we go. Oh, look in there, and there's no uh, corrosion on the, um, whatever they're called, contact points. I don't know. This is so dumb how my face is cut off. Okay. Hold on for like one minute. Uh, I have to move my camera up. This is, this is absurd. That's better. Okay. Wow. I'm sorry about that. That was so annoying. Uh, it was just like not the right angle. Um, yeah, Sony Walkman, the WMFX44, I think is the model number. 70 bucks around there on Amazon FBA. You want to include headphones though. I buy cheap little headphones uh, like this right here. They cost about a quarter uh, if you get them off Alibaba in bulk. Put that in there, say with headphones. And you're good to go. This is a Colgate uh, hand-signed print by University Artworks. I picked it up for a dollar. It says 10 bucks on the uh, on the tag here. They're running a sale, all artwork was a dollar. And then my girlfriend's mom is an alumni from Colgate. So I got this. If I can't sell it, we'll just give it to her. The thing about art, you you know, art at thrift stores really is kind of a slept on category. I've found prints that go for three to 500 bucks uh, in thrift stores. In my car, I've got a Toshi Ashada Japanese woodblock print that's going into my personal collection that I bought for 15 bucks that I think goes for around 250, 300 on, um, on uh, eBay. Some plush ones right here. These will be fun. This right here, what is this thing? Well, it's called an anole or an anole. I don't know how to pronounce it. I just know what it's called. It's a, a reptile with like a, uh, you know, an air sac or whatever it is down there. I would assume it's to like make a, a mating call. Um, the brand is Fiesta, right? And it's got these wire uh, formable arms so you can like put it around something in your house. But the important thing is barcode right here. You can FBA this. You can scan the barcode. Sell it as like new or new, depending on the condition you think it is in. Put in a poly bag with a choking hazard uh, sticker on it, and you're good to go. Uh, this is going for like 50 bucks, if you can believe that. Detroit Tigers, little plush. Um, again, this is only a dollar or 50 cents. I don't remember. This goes for 20 bucks and it's going to sell a lot. You know, it's almost opening day, almost baseball season. And me being in Detroit, you know, I probably, if I can't sell this on eBay, I think I could still sell it uh, locally for 10 bucks and I paid again under a dollar for it. So who cares, right? Uh, it'll move. That's the point. Home sweet home. This is uh, kind of a, when I bought it, it was like this. When you pull the shirt down, it says Habitat for Humanity. It's a special edition, I guess you might call it, Habitat for Humanity Teddy Bear. A lot of people have a lot of emotional investment in that organization. And this bear, believe it or not, it's going for like 25 bucks on Amazon FBA. And again, uh, I don't know if it'd be a uh, new condition. I don't see a barcode on it. But you take a picture of it, upload the picture to Amazon for the, you know, on the actual seller listing page where there's a list of all the sellers who have the item listed. They have their condition notes, their name their rating, and then a picture is an option there as well. I'll put a picture up, it takes five seconds extra on your phone, and it'll sell fast. A Woody, whoops. Woody Toy Story doll, uh, paid two bucks for this. Um, it's got the year 19, or 2001 on it, I think. Uh, it's, or 2004, it's from, actually from Toy Story 3. When you read the tag, it's got the pole chain on back here. It's out of batteries though. Uh, even non-working, this goes for about 20 bucks. If it is working and it says all the phrases it has, 
um, it'll still go for uh, around $45. Kyle said, does it have the hat? No, no hat, so it's not complete. Uh, can't even you know sell it as even like new. It's gonna have a picture of it, but still, there's someone out there who wants this for their child or their own collection, maybe. This it was a great find. I was ecstatic to get this. I saw this hanging on the rack, and I was like, oh, I gotta buy that. And I'm gonna show you the, uh, the, the design first, and you guess what it is. Who knows what design this is? Who knows in the chat? Someone has to know. It's like the holy grail of thrifting for like men's sweaters. Um, who? Someone say what it is. Someone. I'm looking. Come on, come on. Okay, we got two right answers, three right answers. No, not Bill Cosby. No. This is a Kuji, four people got it right. Kuji sweater. Look at that. Kuji Classics, 100% cashmere, made in Australia. Uh, this is, like, for a thrift store find, that's so good. Um, there's a few flaws. Like, you look on the sleeve right here, uh, there's some holes, but that's just from the knitting uh, kind of going apart. And the woman told me you could fix it. I'm not going to fix it. I have no clue how to do that. The zipper is fine. It has the Kuji zipper on there. Um, you know, this totally checks out as being authentic. Uh, and the fact that it's a, um, a cashmere sweater just makes it so much better. Uh, if it was like the bright bombastic yellows and purples with the drip pattern, like if it was the same color as my plaid shirt, but it was this same design, it'd be worth a lot more money. But comps on this are still above a hundred bucks. It's, um, it's, a, it's a really good find and I think it'll sell really fast too. You just look up Kuji. Uh, on eBay, C-O-G-G-I, and look, you know, watch the sold listings. Uh, don't buy Kuji jeans, don't buy Kuji t-shirts, really, but the sweaters with that drip pattern, oh my god, they are selling. And I paid four bucks for it, too. Four bucks, can you believe that? This right here, Doodle Bears. These were big in the late 90s, or late 2000s, early 2000s, late 90s, I believe. I remember seeing ads for them. Um, and it's a bear you can draw on. It's for kids. Uh, it doesn't come with any of the accessories. I think you put pens back here in its belt like this. You can see uh, there's like a pen case. Um, it's collectible though. It's got a cool like tie-dye pattern, which I think is very memorable for a lot of people. It's easy to pick out. Even on the bottom of its feet, it has this cool design. Uh, and these on Amazon FBA, I believe I can FBA this uh, as collectible, acceptable, or used condition. And it should catch me, fetch me, Around 30 bucks. These right here, look at these. Look at it, look at this. I'm squeezing it. This one gets stuck. <laughs> well, I didn't even realize it gets, uh oh. This one doesn't work. <laughs> this one does, though. You squeeze it and it sings a song. It's um, they're called sing. What? Well, what they're called is uh, they're called singama jigs, right? I have no clue when they were made. <laughs> what what's the deal with them? This one's new with tags. This one uh, it's like a holiday one. It's not gonna sell for a while, I bet. But this one right here is like a mermaid. There were two of these in the quarter bin at a, at my thrift store. Uh, when you, the, the, there's like a little button in here, um, that you like, there we go. <laughs> These are so odd. <laughs> they're really easy to look up on Amazon. Um, you know, they're called singamajigs and just put like, uh, mermaid singamajig, reindeer singamajig. Oh god, those are both, those are both worth like 25 bucks too. The most annoying toys I if I had a nephew or a kid or whatever, I would never buy them those. Those sound you would wake up at like four in the morning with a little kid by your head holding these dolls and being like, ah it would be it'd be terrible. I I feel bad for whatever parents buying those for me because they don't know what kind of hell they're in for. Mickey Mouse Disney plush doll. 
Again, you know, nothing fancy. Would not have bought this if it was not for the tag back here. Uh, because something so nondescript as a Disney plush like this is going to be hard to find on Amazon. But again, the barcode makes it easy to find. And uh, it's discontinued. I'm going to have to run a lint brush over it. It's pretty, pretty dirty. But there's no tears and no stains, which is important. And it's going for, you know what, I'll look it up right now and just tell you. Uh-oh, uh uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, God. I hit my cord again. Uh, I'm using my barcode scanner right here. Scan the barcode. And, yeah, it's going for around 15 bucks. So, again, you know, I paid uh, a quarter for it, and I'm going to get 15 bucks out of it. And it's moving all day. Moving fast. That was the first bag I wanted to show you. Let's take a quick break and uh, ask, answer some questions. Who's got questions? If you're here and you want to ask a question, give it a thumbs up. Give the video a thumbs up and then hit the notification button on the bottom right corner because... Whew, I didn't make it. <laughs> because uh, then I won't have to go through the whole rigmarole of making you wait here for two minutes, going to the Facebook group, sharing the link, all that garbage, notifications, you get a text or whatever it is on your phone, you pop in, you see me show you garbage I bought for quarters that I'll sell for many, many dollars. Uh, I'm going to look at the, super, at, the, at the chat now. We'll go through the chats. There, there's probably 25 or 30 messages. So, let's go through them. A lot of people saying, hi, good morning, Karen. Hey, Mike. Hey, Derek. Thank you for about the warehouse compliment. Karen says, Little Pony should sell good. It will sell, but it's a bit, um, a bit over saturated right now so they're not selling for the kind of money i would like to get for it i want to get 25 bucks for it i think you know it was selling for that earlier in the year i think um i think it'll sell for that in, in a few weeks once these bottom feeders get rooted out eddie willis wow i need to go on amazon i sold my sony walkman for 30 bucks yes you did eddie you sold your sony walkman for too little however make sure you're ungated for amazon because my nose itches just a minute oh my gosh because if you're not, <laughs> this is the most unprofessional live stream I've ever been a part of. Uh, if you're not ungated for Sony, you're going to be disappointed. Uh, it is easy to get auto ungated. Contrary to popular belief, Sony is an auto ungate brand. It might take you six months and a uh, million dollars in sales, but it's auto ungate. Karen says, cute tiger. Yeah, go Detroit. Eat them up, tigers. Kyle says, Facebook Marketplace. That was in regards to, again... This little guy right here would go great on Facebook Marketplace, again, for like five, ten bucks. And I paid 50 cents or a dollar, I don't remember. So if I can't sell it on eBay, which I doubt, I'll sell it there. Everyone said, Kooji for the sweater. It was great. Uh, Bill, Dana says, Bill Cosby. Eddie goes, Bill Cosby. <laughs> Hermes. I wish it was a Hermes sweater. Or Hermes. I don't, you know, I can't say any of these fancy brands. I, I get it. I don't talk to these highfalutin aristocrats. I just sell them garbage, so uh, I don't know how to say these things. These brands, I only can spell them. Uh, Karen says she'll buy it. <laughs> that was a little squeeze toy. Alana goes, my kids had new versions of those. They're annoying as heck. I bet. I bet they're terrible. <laughs> uh, Lauren says, 32 watches and only 9 likes. Smash that like button. Thank you. Uh, the like, but the more likes a video gets, the uh, wider search grasp it has. So um, the way YouTube works, if someone were to Google thrift store items to resell right now, which is the first four words or five words of my title, uh, this would pop up in the first like five results. If they were to search like thrift store items for Mercari, which is the first three items and like the eighth or ninth item, uh, the more likes the video has, the more likely they are to find that video. It acts as like a um, kind of a crowd or a peer reviewed type setting where the more engagement a video gets, so likes, comments, shares, etc., the more people are more likely to find the video. And so that's why all these people are telling you, hey, like the button or whatever, um, because we all want to have a wider, you know, what's it called? Um, area of reach, I guess, is the, is the best way I can put it. Uh, that is called SEO, Search Engine Optimization, and boy, oh boy, could I go on for hours about that. That was my initial way I made money. <laughs> One of the ways, I guess. Uh, let's see, what else? 
Kyle says, what are dollar days up there? Dollar days, Fridays in Metro Detroit, all the same color tag is $1 for clothing. Bentley bought a Hermes shirt for a dollar. Nice find, dude. That's going to make you some good money. And if I'm not pronouncing it right, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yusuf goes, before going out thrifting, do you usually have an idea, game plan of what you're going for typically? I'm going for whatever I can sell to make money. Um, if it's like a big sale, like 10 for a dollar CDs or one dollar, five for five dollars clothing items for a certain tag, I will focus on those, but I'm never passing up a money maker. Um, I'm not gonna say, oh, it's not, not part of my plan today. My plan is to make as much money as fast as possible while not hurting anyone. <laughs> um, do you, uh, Dana says, do you get cheap bags or boxes to ship items? I do not. I just pay up front for them. I buy them from Uline or Home Depot or Amazon, and I'm paying, you know, probably um, a buck forty for my boxes to Amazon, about a nickel per bag. And then um, I don't really sell many things in hard goods on eBay. It's almost always Amazon. And so generally, for like, if I sell like the Furby I showed you in auction on in the Facebook group, that'll just go in a box for one of my Amazon returns. Um, I have bi-monthly Amazon return shipments. So all my FBA shipments that get returned to Amazon warehouses come back to me in two chunks. Um, on the 1st and 15th, I believe, of the month. And so those boxes, I use the boxes they mail me to mail my eBay shipments again. I'm not doing that much eBay work, though, So or eBay hard goods. All the clothing I sell on eBay goes in uh, padded mailers or poly bags. And the poly bags, I don't have one around me. But they're 18 by 24, and I pay, I think, yeah, a nickel or a dime a piece. It's definitely worth it, I think. Uh, Lauren says, there's free boxes at Walmart though, after 10 p.m. Yeah, there's free boxes everywhere. It's just easier for me to buy them. Uh, Jennifer says, need those choking hazard bags? Yes, you do, Jennifer. They're right here. I buy these. These are like a, a penny a piece, I think. I buy them in packs of 5000 So 50 bucks a piece for $5,000. Uh, free shipping. Dana has a bidding war on eBay. Nice. Make that money. Uh, Justin says, hey. Hey, Justin. Fabian says, what's up, man? I've been good. How have you been? You're down in Florida. It's still cold up here. Doc Brazos, who's Justin, found a Nike vintage windbreaker suit yesterday for four bucks. Wow, the full suits. That's a pro tip, too. If you see a full suit, Adidas, Nike, Reebok, always buy it because there are people who want to go with that monochromatic look. All green, all black, whatever it is. Uh, and you can't mix and match for that. It has to be the same brand, the same RN, the same everything, right? So those sell good. Same with overalls, too. Typical boy, if there's an item that will sell slowly, but potentially having lots of profit, what do you do? I sell it, man. I mean, what do you do? Uh, questions like that are not really helpful because I don't know how much space you have. I don't know how much money it costs. I don't know how badly you need money. Basically, things like that, um, if you can't define exact parameters, you want to figure out what those parameters are, and it'll help you understand how to invest your money. So by parameters, I mean, how much space do I have? How much money do I have? How much time do I have? All those things, and that'll help you understand, okay, is this good for me? There's not really any um, hard and fast rules, but there are guidelines that we can all go by. And the guideline for this is how much space do you have? Would it impact your life? Stuff like that. Kyle Quad 4, I think you're in Indy, says, ever think about doing a Facebook meetup? Yes, this summer we're going to have one uh, in June or July, I think. I want to do a barbecue. That'd be fun, I think. Fabian goes, thrifting as you speak. Went to a book sale this morning and scored big. Thumbs up for Fabian. <laughs> Thumbs up for Fabian. God, I can't talk. If, you, you know, if, you, if you're thrifting right now or if you're sourcing today, this weekend at all, give it a thumbs up. Let's go to the next box. A few records right here. Uh, two, three records I bought. I don't usually buy records because I don't know a lot about them. Uh, I do own a record player. I like listening to them, but as far as like the trading of records goes, I just don't know a lot about it. This one, though, however, I do know is worth some good money. It was even in the sleeve when I bought it. It's uh, Ingve Malmsteen. Uh, marching out. If you don't know who Ingve Malmsteen is, 
I I encourage you to go to uh, YouTube after my video, not now, after, and look up his name. I'll put a link. In, I'll put a link to actually. No, you know what? After the video posts, come back here, and I'm gonna post the most face melting ear bleeding guitar solo you have ever heard in your entire life. I might even just keep this because Ingve Malmsteen is a technical guitar hero. I like it. I'm, I'm going to listen to it for sure, actually. This is not even going in the, this is going to go in the Blake pile. Stephen Martin, wild and crazy guy. Uh, a comedy music album. Uh, again, this was from, uh, 1978, I believe. Um, you know, again, this is going in my personal collection, I think. To find this for a quarter, pretty cool. Comps, I don't even know what the comps are. Uh, I know it's worth, you know, money. Um, even got the, you know, the sleeve and everything. Man, I haven't even looked at the at the condition of this record, though. Someone's going to be like, you're not using gloves for the records! I'm sure there's some weird, like, always use gloves, whatever. Oh, this is so nice. There's no no scratches, no warping. Man, that's a that's a that's a cool looking record, um, and Steve Martin's hilarious. I think he's very very funny. One of my favorite actors and comedians and just entertainers in general. Uh, oh, what what else is in here? That's pretty cool. What the heck is this? Oh, it's his set list. <laughs> this is not really autographed. If it was, I would probably just shit my pants right now. <laughs> um. But it says best fishes, Steve Martin. That's so funny. He has a fish in his suit. And then it has the set list on back. I had no clue this was even in here. That's so cool. Oh. If that was real, if that was really autographed, I would you would you would see a grown man just like go white. Turn totally white. Very, very cool though. And then some more comedy right here. The Law of the Language and Lenny Bruce. If you don't know who Lenny Bruce is, I encourage you again to do a little reading on him. He was a, one of the initial comedians who really was, um, or at least counterculture comedians, who was given a huge stage in the early 60s. He was very outspoken on a number of social and political issues. Uh, and while listening to his comedy, looking back, it might not be so funny for us right now, I think we can still appreciate the uh, poignant nature of his delivery and content. And it's also worth, you know, 20 bucks. <laughs> I'm keeping those, though. A few clothing items right here. This. This bad boy. It's a... Oh, whoops. Wrong side. It's a Disney crew neck sweater. And I paid uh, four bucks for it. But it's got a real cool retro design. I don't recall. Is there a... Yeah. There's no... It says... Nope. I thought it said 1978. It doesn't. It says 0078. But um, this is probably a, a uh, mid '90s crew neck, uh, and at four bucks, I should be able to get probably twenty, twenty-five dollars for it. I'm not sure. I, I don't remember the the comps. Some really, really cool jeans here. Uh, what's the deal with these jeans? Why do they look so weird? What's up with the patches? These are uh, Aramind reinforced motorcycle jeans. They're for motorcycle drivers. These are kind of similar to like cool K U H L jeans or K U M L U H uh, L jeans, where they're really, really, really high quality. I mean, I could tug at these for for a long time and it wouldn't even tear. They've got reinforced knees, reinforced butt pad, everything. Uh, he's got some cool patches on them. I do not know if these are. Uh, they come with it. I think that they're you know his own customization. The the guy who owned these. Yeah. Man, that's cool. It's like, uh, you've seen those battle jackets of those guys who go to punk shows and have all their misfits and, um, you know, Iron Maiden patches and that kind of stuff. Kind of similar. I paid, wow, I only paid four bucks for these. And uh, the comps on these are anywhere from 40 to 60 bucks. A sweater I bought, really, really nice uh, Shetland wool. Brooks Brothers vintage stripe sweater. The uh, vertical, or sorry, horizontal stripes are doing really well right now. Um, it's kind of like a 90s vintage type design. And the fact that it's Shetland wool and Brooks Brothers and it's not shrunk or anything, that means, you know, I don't know what the comps are on that. I paid 
250 for it, so uh, it's gonna make me some money. I'm not sure how much, but I know it is gonna be profitable because of the brand, the design, and the material. One more, what is this? Patagonia um, undershirt type deal. It's like Under Armour material. Uh, Capilene, Patagonia Capilene. I picked up a Patagonia jacket today too at the same thrift store. They have so much great Patagonia there. Oh man. Um, I don't know if it's in this haul or not. There's a little run here uh, on the side of it, but still, you know, 20 bucks at least very easily. Pair of vintage Nike uh, swimming board shorts. No block design, which kind of, or no block logo, which is not good. But again, the old red tag and their side ex size extra large. So uh, I paid, this might be youth extra large now that I look at them actually. They're not very big. <laughs> but um, again, you know, for these I paid $250 for them and worst case scenario, 15 bucks. This right here is a Don Joy uh, knee brace or elbow brace. I don't recall. Um, it's got like a locking uh, angle. So I think it's for, it's for when you like tear your ACL or MCL um, or whatever the tendon in your elbow is. I have no clue what those even are. Uh, and you can lock it in place like this and it keeps your arm at a certain degree angle. I paid six, oh, I paid six bucks for this and the comps are in the 40 to 60 range. That bag is empty. Um, I scrapped a bunch of material and here's all my cords. I, I, I cut the cords off of, um, if I'm gonna recycle like a bunch of VCRs, for example, uh, I cut the cords off because the cords are worth like about 80 cents a piece, I think, or 50 cents a piece, I think. I don't know what the current price of copper is, but I know it makes sense to cut the cords off. It's really easy to do. Um, we just have a, a we have in, in the side of my warehouse uh, a much larger bin going. We dump the cords in there, and then once a month I take them down to my scrap yard and make you know a couple hundred bucks. A pair of yoga pants or yoga shorts or whatever the hell these are. These are actually inside out, uh, and so um, the uh, the person who listed them had no clue what brand they actually were. But when I looked inside to find the brand, what did I see? This right here, Lululemon. Very, very good brand, very desirable. Uh, and then you can see at the, you know, oh, how do I know, there's no tag on here. Blake, how do you know what size they are? Well, if you look on the bottom cuff right there, pro tip, size eight. These are size eight leggings, it's down there. Uh, you can use that tip to make some money. A pair of Olakai loafers, waif wafers, loafers, uh, leather shoes like this. Really, really, really solid condition. I mean, look at the bottom of those soles. When you're buying shoes like this, you want to look at the soles. You want to look back here. Because some people walk with a certain gait or whatever where it wears away the back of the heel and they become essentially unusable. It can cause like serious hip problems uh, and lower back problems, but these are just in great condition and they're size uh, 15, which is my size. So I kind of want to keep them. They're worth, I paid two bucks for them, if you can believe that. Two bucks at a, um, a PTO thrift store. But they're worth money, you know, probably between 40 and 50 bucks. So it's kind of like, do I want money? Do I want cool shoes? I don't know. I have a pair of these and they're, they're Patagonia. Um, so I shouldn't keep these, but I just like having nice things like this. I want to show you the price tag. You see that? 250. I paid 250 for all of this. All of this. It's a guitar hero case. But, 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 what's inside? Oh, oh, look at this. Look at this. A dongle for the wireless controller. Wow, wow. Not bad. But what else? But what else is inside? What else is inside of this guitar hero bag? There's something up here, too. 
Oh, look, it's the, uh, it's the, um, the, the strap for the shoulder, the shoulder strap. Wow, that's pretty great. Wouldn't it be awesome if I opened up the Guitar Hero guitar and there was a guitar in here? Or the Guitar Hero bag and there's a guitar in here? Wouldn't that be just crazy if I did that and I was unzipping it and we saw... Oh my god, it's a Guitar Hero guitar! It's the Gibson! But it's not any Gibson, it has the Smashing Pumpkins Zeitgeist faceplate on it. Oh boy! This is just... I mean, this is a, a, a really, really, really great, great find. The whammy bar is so tight. Everything checks out. Look at this. It's the Les Paul Smashing Pumpkins faceplate. No, no corrosion at all. These are the things you want to find. These are the things you want. Uh, I don't know if the, I haven't even looked it up yet. I got this little, yeah, it, this is not even removable. I mean, this all together, I don't know what the comps are. I have no clue, but I paid $2. 50 for it two dollars and fifty cents if someone wants to do me a favor and look up the comps on ebay that would be really appreciated uh i would love to do it right now but it would kind of ruin the live stream i picked this up at the same place i picked up those olakai shoes for um a real hit or miss thrift store but today well this day i i was there i really hit it strong i think i might even ebay that because it's such like a cool um such a cool item, you know? It's, it's it's unique. It's like a set. One more Guitar Hero guitar. Two bucks for this. It's the uh, SG controller for the PS2 Red Octane. Again, that went tight, tight whammy bar. Um, there's no battery pack, so there, there can be no contact strips, whatever they're called, that are corroding. Another one of these. I, I found two of these in the past few weeks. So I really want to keep this pair. Patagonia swimming trunks. Really nice. Men's 32. Uh, a little small for me, but I got to lose weight anyways. <laughs> got to slim down for summer. This would be really, really good motivation. Uh, they're really well made. Cool, like, um, you know, tribal type design. Uh, Patagonia swimming trunks don't sell for the most money. But again, 25 bucks on those would not be a uh, crazy find. I don't remember if I showed this or not. I don't remember. I have not listed it yet because it's I've just been busy and it's weird. But it's a Jan Sport uh, down vintage vest. It's like from the 70s. It has this really cool 70s, 80s, 80s like it's the kind of thing like Marty McFly would wear in Back to the Future, I feel like. And when you look at the tag, it is down. It says down carry label right there. So there is a uh, animal animal byproducts in this in this bad boy uh i don't know comps on this it's a medium it's not the best size in the world you know it's reversible to an extent um you know kind of <laughs> uh it, it used to have a hood but still you know i wouldn't doubt if it's gonna get me 30 bucks i don't know i have no clue right here this is kind of a cool shirt I bought this for less than a dollar. It was uh, 50 cents in a like a, a reject bin at the thrift store. It's a, is that Jeff Gordon, right? Yeah, it's a Jeff Gordon DuPont Motorsports uh, Polo. Um, NASCAR stuff sells pretty well for me. The brand is Hayes Authentics, and authentic means money. So again, I bought that without looking it up. I was just kind of perusing a thrift store for fun. I had no service there. 50 cents, uh, I pulled the trigger. Some more plush animals. This is a Pillow Pets, uh, Peter Rabbit type bunny. Let's see if there's a name on it. Uh, there's no name on it, but it's pretty easy to find these. You just type in Pillow Pets, and then you measure it. So this one's like 24 inches or whatever. Um, and it's going to go for between like 20 and 50 bucks. This one right here, I am excited about. I almost want to build up to it because it's so... This is like a uh, one-of-a-kind item. Um, I'll give you a hint. I'll, I'm, I'm going to tell you what year it's from, if I can find the year. I can't find the year. Well, wait, 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 wait. Nope, nothing. No year, but there is a barcode on bottom. It's a uh, new with tags. Mrs. Cup and Chip, or Mrs. I don't know what her name was. Something. 
Mrs. Potts and Chip, Mrs. Cuff, that's funny. Uh, and it has the barcode on it. So when I look up the barcode, I can tell you exactly how much it's going for. Isn't that crazy? And, uh, well, that didn't work. Yeah, this is going for, uh, ooh. No Prime listings on this. This is going to fetch me about 60 bucks Prime, uh, and it's going for about 50 bucks Merchant Fulfilled. This right here, um, I paid a dollar for it, even though it says five bucks. I would not have paid five bucks for it if it was not uh, a dollar tag item. It's Hard Rock Cafe, Paris, you know, vintage hat, one size fits all, wool acrylic blend. Nothing too fancy. It'll, it'll get me 15 bucks probably. This thing's been talking all day, and it's not talking now. That's so aggravating. I paid three bucks for it. Tag back there. Blue tag, so it was discounted. Um, I forget. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see what it is. This is a um, 2015 Elmo Bluetooth toy. And then the number right here, B6527. Yeah, or 572. Right there on the top. That is what you look up on Amazon, and that shows you, okay, yeah, so it, you, it, I think you get an app for this, and it makes its mouth move, and it talks to you. It's like Learn With Me Elmo, or like Count With Me Elmo, some name like that. I don't recall exactly. Um, the batteries are dead. I have not tested it, but it's only three years old, two years old, and so uh, I would have a hard time believing it's broken. This is the one that was talking, I think. So weird. So odd. I picked this up at a, a big thrift store day for me. I went to like eight thrift stores at the first stop. And it was at the bottom of everything in the back of my car. So every bump I heard this. Greetings, royal friend. Prince Elmo says, Pick out Elmo's coming. <laughs> Good job. Greetings, royal friend. So weird, and I could not, and, and down here is the off button, so I finally turned it off, but it was the most, it was so weird to be driving in my car with like the window down, the radio on, and to hear in the back, greetings royal friend, tickle my belly, like, that's not what you want to hear in your car, no one, no one in their right mind wants to mind their own business, driving down the highway, and in the back of their car, hear a little squeaky voice go, tickle me, tickle me, that is, Oh, for so many reasons, just not my ideal day. It is worth like 50 bucks though, so go with the bad. Beanie Baby. I only buy these if they have the tag on them so I can scan, whoops, scan the barcode right there. That's how I know. And then what I do for these, uh, I've shown it before in a video. Take a picture, like new condition. Put it in a bag like this with a choking hazard, slap a sticker on there, throw it in the box. Uh, they're all standard size, so they all go to the same fulfillment center, for me at least, and I make, you know, 10 bucks up a quarter. And then this, a Polaroid Autofocus 660. I only bought this because, one, it was five bucks, but I had a discount card, so it was like two bucks. And then, um, it, you can sell these on Amazon. Uh, I'm gonna have to test it. There's, there's this. I forget what it is. You can buy a kit where you test Polaroid cameras, and uh, I've been meaning to buy one for a while, and finally I just have to. Um, it, you know, it's got some film in here as well, but I believe the battery, the battery is inside of the film in these. I think, uh, and the battery's dead, so it's kind of useless. But um, they're very easy to test. You just, uh, you know, take a picture. Where'd it go? And then if it comes out, you can sell it. And uh, non-working, I think these are like worth 10 or 15 bucks. Because a lot of guys like to repair these. And then working, you can get a lot more money. Um, I don't recall the exact comps, but it's between like, it's, it's over 30 bucks. And that's that bag. Let's circle back. Actually, nah, we've got like 10 more items. So I'm going to circle back around, answer questions. 
uh, and then we'll do our last installment of the thrift store haul. So if you have a question, ask it now and I'll answer it. Dana says, do you ever source your products from local resale apps? No, I do not. People are flaky and that takes up too much time for me. Uh, I don't want to have to waste a morning going to pick up a hundred video games when I can, you know, work on a bigger uh, money maker for me in, my, in, in, you know, the same amount of time. But for a lot of people, it does make sense. Disc Golf Dude, the Knobloch Rock, yes. Ingve Malmsteen. Saw him at G3. I think that was um, Steve Martin. Tiffany says, I'm excited for my life to change from those sick jams. Yeah, I'm going to post the Ingve Malmsteen link and you're going to love it. Chrissy Hustles goes, nice. Kyle, how many days a week do you thrift buy items for eBay, Amazon? Seven days a week. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much sourcing every single day I can. Uh, even if it's just popping in and checking, like, the racks for new clothing they put out. Tiffany goes, oh, damn, I still have my old braces for my ACL reconstruction. Thought they were worthless. They are not worthless, Tiffany. You've got some money on your hands. And sorry about your ACL. That is a bad injury. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Pillow pets do well? Yes, they do. Are you a one-man show? No. Uh, I've got five virtual employees who live in the Philippines and Indonesia who work for me, who do a lot of my customer service stuff. Uh, I have another e-commerce business as well. I, I sell candy and like food online. So they handle all of that customer service stuff. Um, and then I have my brothers and cousins and their friends who come work for me on like a one-day basis. So I, I just say, hey, come by any day you want. The, my rule is you got to work at least 12 hours a day. And then I pay them like 15 bucks an hour. So um, it ends up being, they're, they're just contract employees. Uh, they come and they prep VCRs or they, you know, pack candy or whatever. But no, I'm not a one-man show but I am the only person who's here every single day. Uh, and that was that. Not as many questions this time. I'm gonna go get the other uh, box of thrift store items. One minute. All right. Some bubble wrap, worth a lot of money. Want to keep this? Just kidding. Uh, a few Lego items right here. I was kind of hesitant to buy these. They were only three bucks a pop. And they're taped, so I did not look inside of them. I do not know if they're complete. If they are complete, I made a bunch of money. If they're not complete, not so much. I think what I'm gonna do is just lot them up and auction them off on eBay. Um, you know, I guess I'll, I'll count the pieces and I'll sell them individually if they're there. But if they're not there, I'll just sell them for parts because there are people who are always trying to find a place in parts for their Lego stuff. I'm running out of space over here. A pair of shoes. I don't really buy that many shoes. I don't know a lot about shoes, but I do know these shoes. These are Kobe's uh, eights, I think. I don't remember. Um, a few years old. Really good condition. There's a, a, a scuff right here. I don't know what that's from. It's like a knife someone cut out. But the shoes are in solid condition. The body's in good condition. I paid five bucks for these and they'll go for around uh, 40 bucks on, on eBay. Oh, and the way you can check what the brand is on shoes, um, they're 13s. But you look, you look in the side here and uh, this number above the barcode right there it's like, uh, this one is 483371-400. That is like the model number for the shoes. And you can put that in eBay and you'll find comps. A new in-box programmable Sony PlayStation 2 case. Uh, I paid five bucks for it. This thing goes for $70 FBA. It's like for somebody who's like playing fighting games or whatever and they want to program like their favorite combo move. Uh, and for the PlayStation 2, it is a wired controller. It's not wireless, so uh, not the most valuable thing in the world. But again, 70 bucks is not bad. I'm going to hide the brand. Guess what brand this is? If you guess Sony, you're wrong. It's Kobe. 
Kobe, right? Who buys Kobe stuff? Well, I do. I am always gonna look up any uh, like desk de or uh, bedside alarm clock radio that has anything odd to it. So like this has a CD player on top or like an iPod jack or like uh, a projector, you know, for the ceiling. People still buy these. People are still buying bedside radios. And when I pay six bucks for it, six dollars for it, uh, I'm always gonna pop on that. Comps on uh, Amazon FBA are around 50 bucks. Caesar four. This is one of those cool civilization world builder games. Uh, where I bought it, usually they scan everything and anything worth any money they pull off the shelves and sell themselves on Amazon. They miss this one though, those Goodwill snakes. Uh, this one's comping around 40 bucks FBA. I checked for it, it's only a two CD game. Got all the parts. You know, it's got all this stuff too. It's in new and, well not new, new in box. It's almost complete, has the manual too. Um, this was a fun game. I played it when I was a kid. Uh, I love those Civilization World Builder games. Again, I think the sales rank was like 20000 so it's going to sell in a month probably. Not the best find, but again, 4 bucks in the 30 You know, pretty easy call. What is this? Oh, what is this? It looks like a like a, a skirt or a scarf maybe. But no, it is uh, for like holding babies. Kangaroo Corner. I don't know if it's for like breastfeeding or what it is. But you put this on... And then you uh, stick a baby in there somewhere. I think right here, it's like a pouch. So you hold it around your, your, your shoulder, stick a baby in there, and the baby just drags you know behind you. I'm kidding. Uh, the baby's very safe and secure in there. Uh, new, these go for like 60 bucks. Used on eBay, they're going for around 30, or on Amazon, I mean, they're going for around 30 or 40. The color depends uh, on the price. That beige tan color is not the most um, desirable color, but... Uh, you know, it is what it is. Some more Toy Story stuff. This is Jesse, I believe. Now, this is kind of a, you know, got another pull string doll. No hat, no lasso or anything. But you can see they put a lot of uh, effort into, like, making the chaps. It's yarn for the hair, not plastic. So it's a bit high quality item, higher quality item. Uh, I do not know what this is going for because there's about 18 different uh, Jesse dolls on Amazon FBA, but I will find the one who has the uh, you know detached um, chaps like that and the yarn hair, and I will price it accordingly. Uh, I have no doubt it'll go for more than 30 bucks though. I paid 99 cents for these. This is a pair of women's speed bag gloves. Uh, nothing too fancy about these. The brand is Everlast. Everlast is a boxing fighting brand. Um, they're in really good condition. There's no, no real creases, no like disgusting sweat marks on them. Uh, I don't see if it says they're women anywhere actually, but you can look up this number right here for 312 and that will tell you, uh, what they're going for. They're going for about 15 bucks on Amazon, or I'm sorry, on eBay. Two more Toy Story items, and then we're done. This, a VTech Buzz Lightyear uh, learn to read type game. Um, handheld game. I did not uh, test it in the store because the batteries were dead, but I looked at it, and again, no corrosion on the contact points, so uh, I feel very good about this working. I will test it out. because It's going for like 70 bucks on Amazon, if you can believe that. And then the final one, a uh, whoa, Woody Dune Buggy Racer Car. I thought it was a remote control car, and it kind of is, but when you look at it, you know, where's the remote control? What you do with this unique car is you go. That was turned off. And, uh, you know. It, you, it, you, you do, I don't know, but it makes noises, it cost me a dollar, Reach for the sky. maybe it does need a remote control, I don't know, I can't find it, but for a dollar, they, 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 I had, there was no remote control, so that I, I, I 
brought that up to them and they lowered the price to 99 cents. Initially, I didn't think it needed a remote control, but I wanted to get a lower price, so I still said that. Um, I do not know if there's a motor in here or if it's like you, you use this to like charge the um, charge the, the, the battery or whatever it is to make the noise. Uh, one of the eyes is peeling off. Again, not the best thing in the world, but from what I could tell on Amazon, if it is the same thing, I'm going to have to read the listing to make sure it does not come with a you know, a little handheld remote control. Um, but if this is the right item, this is going for like 40 bucks on Amazon. Uh, we'll see, you know, again, I'm not totally sure, but I do feel pretty good about this. And that is it, my friends. I got some more books there, but you don't care about book titles, no one does. It's been an hour so far, an hour long video. Let me pull my receipt out of here just so I don't lose it. Oh, that's a Meyer receipt, yeah. Um, I'll answer a few more questions, but uh, but then we're out. So uh, let's see. Disc golf dude says people are flaky as crap in my town. No more local for me unless it's a great find or sell. I agree. I don't like local meetups. I just you know it, it's it's very rarely a good use of my time. Russell the raw man. I'd like to know what kind of schedule you have for your business. Like when do you buy and when do you do your shipping? Um, I like to source in the mornings. So what I do is uh, I will go around to thrift stores at like 9, 10 a.m., get everything that's new on the racks, buy those hopefully, and then I work from like 11 or, or, or noon until like 7 p.m. usually, and then I go pick up my girlfriend, or I go work out, or I go home and make dinner or whatever. Uh, so I'm only working like, you know, I don't know, 9, 10 hours a day. Uh, but I enjoy it, so you know, I, I, I work a bunch. And then I, you know, I also make the videos and I spend about an hour and a half, two hours a day uh, on YouTube, and then about an hour or 45 minutes answering questions in the Facebook group as well. So I'm probably busy from you know 8 a.m., 9 a.m. until 11 p.m. at night, but I enjoy it. Uh, how do you find time to list all this stuff? I don't, to be honest. That's why I bring people in on the weekends. Um, tomorrow we've got five guys coming in. And we're going to uh, picture, list, and prep everything. A lot of this stuff, too, goes to aardvarklots.com. Like, all my returns to Amazon, I sell in lots in aardvarklots.com. Uh, so, like, this stuff right here, like, these two Otterbox cases, they got returned to me. And I don't want to go through and test them out. So I'm just going to put them on aardvarklots.com um, and sell them for, like, you know, a buck a piece or two bucks a piece or whatever in a lot, uh, in a box of stuff. Uh, RC and what do you get car? That's cool. It was cool. I liked it a lot. Film Factory goes, how's the unicorn cereal doing? I'll let you know in a few days. It just today hit Amazon Warehouse. And so it's going to um, be two or probably not until Monday or Tuesday will it go live. And then I'll tell you then. Do you arbitrage a lot of Dollar Tree items? No, I don't. I just did that video just for people who want to do that. Um, most of the videos I make, I don't do for money. I just do them to show, here's how you make money. Someone just sent me a message on eBay asking to ship to Indonesia. I don't know how much it costs to ship there. You think it's a scam? No, I don't think it's a scam, but I do think you should tell them to use eBay global shipping. So GPS or whatever it's called. Basically, you mail it to Kentucky. It's like Arlington, Kentucky, and then they ship it around the world. And uh, the only reason a buyer would want you to go around that process is to, uh, you know, evade import taxes and tariffs and that kind of garbage. So they would say, I want you to mail it to me as a gift, whereas eBay will say merchandise and it just, you know, it's a more above water way of doing things. We're about an hour into this. That is all, my friends. Uh, thank you for coming. Thanks for waiting here. Give it one last thumbs up if you can. I really appreciate it. Uh, that'll give the video a bit more push, and um, I'll have a video for you tomorrow. Uh, don't know what it's about, but I think I've been about two weeks now of a video every day, as opposed to like, you know, twice a week or three times a week that I was doing before, and I really would love to keep this once a day um, timeline going because it helps increase uh, search visibility for my videos and also helps people like you make more money. See you guys later.